are produced by the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin. You can check out the sports mix today between noon and one, where you can further bid on these uh, Penn State uh, West Virginia tickets. The game August the 31st, 1250 bucks, the highest bid right now. Post your bid in our Facebook comment section or by calling this uh, fine uh, establishment at 304-263-6586 or 6540. Let's check it out. Hard Knocks with the Chicago Bears. Colin, you've been watching this, uh, the Hard Knocks show. My goodness, Tyson Bajant last night, of course, the Shepherd graduate, Martinsburg graduate, is with the Bears, played in some games last year too. He got a lot of love on the program last night. And the Beast, Travis Bajant, featured in there yesterday too. So if you uh, have HBO and you have a chance to go back and check out episode three of Hard Knocks with the Chicago Bears, it's uh, it's a wonderful uh, little feature they did on, on Tyson. And as I said, Travis got a lot of FaceTime yesterday too. Uh, but that's pretty cool. you got a kid that graduated uh, from Martinsburg High School right now, and uh, he's with the Chicago Bears. That's awesome. Via telephone, Sam Petzonk joins us live from the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Sam, good morning. How are you? I'm great, Rob. How are you? I feel wonderful this morning. Man, it is delightful weather-wise here. That's going to end soon, but we're just enjoying a nice run of spring weather here in Martinsburg. Uh, How is the weather in Chicago? We've been lucky. It's been beautiful. It's been 70 degrees and just a nice little uh, classic Chicago windy breeze and uh, been uh, big crowds, long days, but a lot of fun. I hate to go to the negative first. And I, w- I want to you know, get to the, the vice president yesterday. I know uh, Kamala Harris is going to be tonight. Uh, but uh, is any of the on street stuff right now bleeding through inside the convention center with all the pro Palestinian protesters that are burning the American flag and whatever else is going on outside in the street? You know, I actually, I guess it's a tribute to the police uh, of, of the city of Chicago. We have, I haven't encountered a single protester. I haven't, haven't even seen one, let alone heard one. I think the, the traffic was held up the very first day, and then uh, maybe that was about it. But, you know, I mean, they did, uh, several of the speakers have uh, addressed Gaza and uh, in a variety of ways. People understand it's an issue. People feel for the, you know, but they feel the pain and the reason for the protests uh, all around, but I think there's real consensus here that people want uh, to a return of the hostages and a ceasefire. You know, they said in a war of pain, there are no winners. And so I think those protests, to the extent they had a purpose, you know, I think people are on a similar page. Hallelujah. Hopefully, Lord willing, that, that conflict resolves in soon. Tell me about yesterday, because that looked like it was heavy hitter. Uh, Wednesday at the Democratic National Convention. These last couple of days have been filled with some pretty big names. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, you know, the, from Oprah Winfrey to Bill Clinton, uh, you know, I've been a Bill Clinton fan since I was knee high to a grasshopper. You know, um, I, I, I've kind of grown up with Bill Clinton. I'm 40 years old. So, my, you know, uh, I remember coming to see Bill Clinton at the Bridgeport Airport in the early 90s uh, when he was the, called the man from a place called Hope, you know, and uh, to see him again. I've seen got the chance to hear Bill Clinton speak several times over the year, uh, you know, he, he spoke about uh, all the things he's always stood for, uh, trying, trying to help uh, the American economy to grow and thrive, and, uh, and that was really cool to see him again. It, he made the point after he's been out of the White House for 23 years, and he's still younger than Donald Trump. <laughs> I thought, good point mr clinton and he i mean he did he looked old i mean i've like i've i've been hanging out with bill clinton for 30 years now and uh he is old you know and mm-hmm. glad he recognizes that and he's not trying to run for president anymore <laughs> he's he's never looked the same since that whole heart procedure right well that really takes a lot out of you you know Maybe you would think right yeah. yeah. Sam, talk to me about the prospective uh, potential vice president's speech last night. Well, it was beautiful. I mean, you know, I, the most touching part about it for, to me was uh, not even so much anything he said, but the people who were there with him. His whole high school football team came out on the stage. I don't know if if you were able to see that on TV, but it was just a wonderful thing. These guys who been coached by Coach Walls, came out there as a tribute to him. And, uh, and buddy, what really moved me to tears was when Coach Walls was introducing his, his family and he, the 
you know, mentioned about his daughter who's named Hope, who they tr- struggled to conceive her. They had to go through fertility treatments. And, uh, and he said, look, this election is about really basic things. It's about our families and helping people to have the families that they want, uh, the fam- support the families that they love. And the camera panned down to Coach Walls' son. And the poor man was just, uh, just, overcome with tears uh, sitting next to his sister who had been conceived by IVF. And, uh, you know, it's just a reminder about the basic things we're fighting for. People, freedom, families, our future. Uh, it, 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 It was very moving to me. Republicans have been criticizing him for a stolen valor and now exaggerating about the, uh, extent of the, uh, infertility situation. Is, is any of that well, uh, concerning you or, or landing with the, the Democrats? I, I, I'm not any expert on fertility. I'm not sure. I understand there's different, there's IVF, there are other procedures. I'm I don't understand all the gradations or what they personally went through. I mean, I, I think my, my takeaway is, you know, this is this is a type of medical care that it, 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 people need to understand. They need to learn about it from a doctor. That's why the government does not have any role in the doctor's office. <laughs> you know, these are complex medical choices that women and families have to make. And that is one place that there is not enough room for the government to be in a doctor's office. That's not where they belong. And I know our friends, we got a lot of libertarian friends listening on the radio out there in in, uh, Berkeley County, and we all agree about that. This this is just... uh, not what government should be doing, meddling in people's private, complex personal health care decisions. How about his military record and some of the claims, Sam? Is any of that I mean, concerning my, under- to you? my understanding about that, Rob, is, I mean, for crying out loud, he was a guardsman for 20-some-odd years. He was uh, a rank member, I think maybe a chair of the... Uh, a Veterans Affairs Committee and and uh, managed the passage of some historic legislation uh, for uh, for veterans and for uh, you know pr- we've done a lot to protect the victims of the burn pits, people with the mental health needs. I mean, I know a lot. Of, I've, I think we've spoken before. So many veterans in West Virginia have a need for mental health and counseling through our VA system. I mean, Tim Walls served for a long time with distinction. Uh, I, I don't know the degree of combat that, that he experienced, but the point is he learned the lesson of service, and he paid it back to the vets it, as when he was elected to Congress, and uh, he really seems to carry that ethic of service. He's, he said, never underestimate a public school teacher, you know, and I think that's the attitude, that's really the, the tradition of public service, self-sacrifice that our party uh, it, it represents. I think the issue with Mr. Walls and his, and his uh, military service is using using the rank of command sergeant major, which where he had gone to school for it, but he had never made the full qualification for it. So therefore, he was never a command sergeant major. Um, but apparently, in, in some venue, he is he is claimed to be a command sergeant major, and and that level of of rate is is you don't get. It is the senior most rate that you can have. Uh, as as an enlisted officer, I, I think that's really what the controversy is. I don't know if it's a big deal or not. Um, I, I do have yeah. a, a question for you. <laughs> it's a there's a great controversy on how one pronounces the vice president's name, and I've heard it both ways. How does one say it? You're talking about the current vice president. The current vice president, the candidate, presidential candidate, Kamala or Kamala? Yes. I think the way to boil it down is to take the punctuation approach, comma, law. Kamala. 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 Okay. Kamala. Dun dun dun. Kamala. Right. Like, like common law. Uh, right. So, uh, ABC News is reporting this morning. Oh no, actually, is this twenty first? Anyway, I got an ABC News report in front of me that uh, JFK Jr. expects to drop out of the race and plans to endorse Trump. Uh, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have? Uh, I think. Did I say JFK? To... I meant RFK. Uh, yeah, RFK. JFK. Yeah, yeah, definitely right. That won't work. Race. That would be very <laughs> fascinating if that happened. <laughs> that would have very little uh, impact. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, who knows exactly? My feeling is that all of the RFK supporters um, who, you know, who are unprepared to support uh, somebody as divisive and self-serving as Donald Trump 
will probably reject. I mean, those are in, those are the most independent-minded of people who have been supporting RFK. So I, I don't see a lot, even if he endorses Donald Trump. I mean, if anything, I would think his supporters are not the kind of sort of followers who will just go blindly go along with what RFK does. So I don't know. It'll make a lot of difference. If anything, I think it might encourage people to say, wait a minute. Uh, we're, no, we're reassessing here, and we're not just going along uh, with, uh, with uh, Donald Trump. So going back to the, um, the, the protesters and, and such, is this an opportunity? The, the current administration's um, if, operations in Israel, support of Israel or lack of support of Israel, it's hard to tell at, at some point, but the, the, the policies toward Israel is... Kamala Harris supportive of the current administration's policies? Is she trying to separate herself from them? Is she trying to maintain some distance so that the uh, the hardline pro Gaza crowd versus the pro Israel crowd? Is she trying to 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 distance herself from from the Biden administration on that? Do you know? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I reject the premise that there's a that there's a hardline pro Gaza crowd that she's trying. That she's no, 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 no. I, I didn't mean to imply that. I'm, the ones who are burning yeah. stuff out in the street, are the, are the ones and, yeah, and protesting yeah, on, yeah, on but, the on the campuses and such. Well, look, you know, I think they're like I say, the, um, there is a. a a difference of perspective and a significant one. I mean, between uh, President Biden and President Harris on this issue and on and quite a, quite a number of others. I mean, people really have the sense that Harris is bringing a new perspective, a new uh, set of priorities, and it's a breath of fresh air. I mean, you can feel that. That's what the whole nation has experienced the last couple of weeks. So yes, Harris is bringing new perspective. She wants to move forward. I think the 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 people of the world have had it with Benjamin Netanyahu. They want him to be gone. They want him to go away. And I feel that very intensely. And I mean, I have a, a, a you know a, a family member who has been fighting in the Israeli Defense Forces, and I am angry at Benjamin Netanyahu for taking for abusing the goodwill of the Israeli people and sending our troops uh, to 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 on this 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 rampage, uh, you know, the, the way they, they have done. And so I think there is a lot of energy in, that behind a new direction. And uh, I disagree with uh, President Biden's toleration of Benjamin Netanyahu. And I, I hope uh, that, that President Harris will bring peace I mean, it, we, we need peace. That is what we have needed. And the Democratic Party has had a long commitment uh, to building peace in the Middle East and across the world by, by supporting our fundamental institutions and, and negotiations, bilateral, multilateralism. And, uh, you know, un unfortunately, uh, Netanyahu has just taken the world away from that uh, set of norms. And Harris is going to demand that we return to it. She's a strong leader. She's got a real vision around this problem, and, and I'm confident she'll lead us to a solution to a peaceful solution soon return the hostages you know and and end the war did i misread the news cycle wasn't it netanyahu embraced the latest peace office ceasefire off, uh, offer and it was gaza that rejected it well you know netanyahu has uh, slow walked this whole thing of course he's he is i think he is beginning and this is why I'm becoming hopeful. I think he is realizing that uh, he, he there is no support for his uh, uh, pugilism, his 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 you know fitful, fightful approach. And, and I think the the game is up for him. And and uh, I don't. But the problem is he's he's held out for so long. The Gazans are you know they, they they're trying to negotiate uh, their way out of a deep hole right now. So uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has harmed the interests of Israel in the West by by uh, you know extending too much violence and now that has made it uh, the, the original deal you know the latest deal uh doesn't it may not work they they more negotiation is needed uh, but it's because he dug in too hard and he he, he went too far uh, it just breaks my heart guys you know well, secretary blinken uh credit said this is this is it this is the last chance 
Well, you know, then then what? What is this the last? I mean, it's not the last. <laughs> Clearly, it's, it's not. But I mean, that's the yeah. So that's when I say when we, kind of the root part of the root of the question is it, it is the Biden Harris presidency. So when the Biden Harris Secretary of State says things like this that, that this this is sort of the last ditch effort if this doesn't work then we're we're doomed that puts candidate Harris in kind of a, a difficult spot. Yeah, it is. There's tension there, you know, like I say, but a lot of this uh, you know, we we they'll have to work through those tensions. I think Vice President Harris is still from an international uh, you know, diplomatic perspective. She's still the vice president. She's not setting policy. She's made her views known. People are very excited about the direction she's leading the world, defending our norms of peace and, and multilateralism and and uh, protecting our alliances, not, threat, not, not joining with demagogues and dictators like President Trump has wanted to do, uh, supporting the Russians and the Koreans. It's just insane and really an affront to our service people and an embarrassment. Uh, President Harris is going to take us in a different direction, and uh, but for the next few months, uh, we have a very capable leader. I mean, for crying out loud, Joe Biden knows more about foreign policy than any public servant in this nation, uh, at, probably at this point, after decades of service on the Foreign Relations Committee. So, you know, we're in a moment of tension, we're in a moment of transition, but it's a hopeful moment. You know, they keep calling Kamala Harris the joyful warrior. So she's, she's fighting, beating this path to a peaceful future, but uh, you know she's not president yet, and I think she knows her place in that regard. Sam, how many people from West Virginia are out there at this convention? Any idea? Estimation? Well, there are about 25 or 30 um, official representatives here, but there, I tell you, there are a lot of West Virginians. I keep uh, seeing them all over the place. People coming down to our little uh, conference room in the hotel here. Hey, you know, old friends who have gone uh, moved around the country. I saw my brother-in-law's old girlfriend lives up here in Chicago now. You know, people coming by. They're so excited. People saw uh, our, you know, uh, people excited about the prospect of reproduction freedom about delivering child care for our nation after 40 years of fighting for it. You know, uh, we had uh, Gene Evansmore, an 83-year-old, and Catherine Prather from up north there, uh, 18-year-old delegate. People saw the roll call with those women and lifting up their voices and their vision for the future of West Virginia. And Gene Evansmore saying, I've been fighting for civil rights and progress in my whole life, and I am definitely not letting Donald Trump take that away from us. I mean, pe- West Virginians from all over were very inspired, so it's been fun to be here. I saw Rod Snyder, a decorated West Virginia Democrat, served in the uh, in, in the uh, Biden uh, administration. He's up here, uh, just got married, so he's got a lot to celebrate. He decided uh, to take his honeymoon at the Democratic National Convention. So there are definitely West, a lot of West Virginians up here, and it's you can feel the excitement from all of them. You know, one should never honeymoon at a Democratic National Convention or a Republican National Convention, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you got to yeah. branch out more than that. But I understand yeah. it's, he's working. I get it. Yeah. Hey, what, how does this work during the course of the day as to the structure of what you folks do? And, and who, who is uh, the herd leader, basically? Oh, well, it's, it's talk about cat cat people. This is an exercise in herding 50,000 cats up here, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it, but I, I, it's a real credit to the DNC and the, and the Chicago Police Force. The way the days work is all the delegations gather together in the morning. Uh, at, in fact, I'm late for breakfast. I'm talking because of talking to you guys, but we have speakers. We talk about our core plan for the day and uh, we have breakfast together. And then they break up throughout the day. There are caucus meetings, council meetings, all sorts of interest groups. There's a rural council. There's a labor council, which I attended yesterday, which was wonderful. Uh, you know, and, and you, you gather with those folks. You remind one another about your challenges and your achievements. I mean, guys, you know, I know it's a concern in uh, uh, Berkeley County. The, the labor council c- couldn't say enough yesterday. The first vote that Kamala Harris cast when she became vice president, it, you know, went up to the U.S. Senate and voted in favor of the Butch Lewis Act 
nearly $90 billion to save a million American pensions. Uh, you know, that is what this administration and Kamala Harris personally made it a priority to protect what our people have earned, these pensions that are the lifeblood of our community. We know all these auto workers uh, from from uh, Martinsburg, Berkeley County, uh, people all over this country w- worked and relied on our pension system. And it was on the skids when Biden came in. And Harris, you know, she was right there, made it a priority to protect our pension system. I mean, what the amount this administration has achieved in three short years, we've dedicated, it just blows your mind. I mean, and no offense to Mr. Clinton, but when you think back on the 90s, he didn't hold a candle to what we've done, you know, with the Saving American Pension System, one of the bedrocks of the social fabric, the security net in America. We've delivered over $16 billion billion dollars of manufacturing incentives and tax credits and, and, and dollars to West Virginia. Sixteen billion dollars is now committed and w- coming to West Virginia over the next decade to build battery plants and, and uh, you know, new electric transmission infrastructure and create thousands of jobs. We're already doing it. We've got the bus plant in Charleston. You know, we've got the form energy plant up in the northern panhandle. Uh, it is rebuilding the American economy rebuilding the, God love it, the West Virginia economy, which we have needed this infrastructure investment. So throughout the day, you get to hear uh, exactly how the rubber meets the road on the things that we believe in and we have achieved as Democrats, and uh, we can talk about the future. So then we do that all afternoon, and then we gather in the evening for the big, uh, you know, speeches and uh, concerts and uh, all of that. Sam, in these meetings, when y'all are getting together with the caucus, are you... Are you influencing the actual platform of the party moving forward, or is it sort of self-congratulatory? It is, in my view of, of conventions in the old days, this is where the you know, cigar smoke filled rooms, right? Where you get together and, and you hammer out, well, all right, this is what, this is what we're going to do. If, if you're going to get our vote, this is what you have to do for us. I think those days are over at this point, right? So, well, no, no, you're you're right. You're right. There is still platform work. That work happens throughout the year. That doesn't all happen at the convention, but there is a platform committee. There's a a variety of you know working committees for the DNC, and people are involved in them. There's a bylaws committee. We have, you know, the Democratic Party. Hey, look, the the Democratic Party has made a lot of mistakes over the years. One of the big ones is a lack of diversity. So the party has done a lot to di- to diversify itself by amending uh, our bylaws, assuring that, you know, uh, we rev- like Michelle Obama said, you know, there's been decades of, of affirmative action for white folks that put, a, you know, old white men in charge of our political system, which was not uh, – the the American vision, to say the least, and so we've done. That's where we've done the work to make the party more reflective of the breadth of American people. You know, the breadth of the West Virginia population. We now have uh, West Virginia Democratic Party that reflects the de- full demographic diversity of the state of West Virginia. You know, we're not the most diverse state in the country, but we have large communities of uh, African Americans, uh, Asians, uh, sp- uh, Spanish speaking, uh, you know, Latin uh, communities. Uh, we have brought those folks into the formal structure of the Democratic Party, so it reflects the voting population of the state, and that's uh, that's a big part of the work of the Democratic Sam, Party. Hey, let me uh, let me jump in because yeah. we have about thirty seconds left. Uh, uh, okay. uh, what, yeah. I know you're looking forward to tonight. What time does that get started? Um, it's I think it's about five o'clock, five thirty, and we'll be there until midnight. <laughs> so President Harris will have a long wind up. I hope everybody tunes in. You know, she will articulate what is at stake. We should be so thrilled. She really has brought joy to this election and to protect reproductive freedom, to deliver the infrastructure, to sustain these new jobs, this new direction for American freedom and the American people. Sam, you've been trained well. Nicely done. <laughs> You guys are training me. I, I, I really, I, I, I think so highly of the dialogue. That it's a civil discourse and disagreement, and uh, this show is so important. So keep it up. Have a great day, sir. You too, Sam Brown Petsonk at uh, nine o'clock.